What's going on guys? My name is Shane and today we're talking about motorized camera sliders and how you can build your own. I just bought a new slider for my camera and while I was waiting for it to deliver I found a video of this dude who bought the same slider as me but he built a motor onto it. I'm gonna send some g-code. And look at that! And then to top it off I found another video of somebody with instructions on how to program an Arduino to make it move on controls. Time for the electronics. And if you haven't worked with Arduino before, don't worry, this is really straightforward. I put all the details into the Instructable in the video description. These are the basic components. We've got a 12 volt battery pack, a giant switch, a stepper driver, an Arduino Nano, and four small switches to change the speed of the sliding motion. So. I don't know how to do any of those things, but I'm totally building one. By the way, the links to these videos and hopefully anything you might need are in the description below. So taking a look here on B&H, a lot of these sliders here are going into the high hundreds and even hitting the thousands and sometimes $2,000 for oh, this one here for 2,500 almost. The slider that I bought cost $190. I paid about $20 in parts and about $30 for a battery for it. To get the process started, you're gonna need some parts. And I recommend you get some extras because you're definitely going to break some things. This is everything that you'll need to make one of these controllers to add a stepper motor to your slider. Obviously, you're gonna need some tools too. And I would recommend that at the very least, you had a good amount of 22 gauge solid core wire, solder with flux, tweezers, wire strippers, and of course, a soldering iron. I would also recommend that you have extra Arduinos and stepper motor drivers, just in case you end up short circuiting some of them. It took a couple of months for my parts to get here. So while I was waiting, I looked up how to code online and I came across the Programming Electronics Academy. I used that and I was able to modify the code provided through the Max Maker video and I was able to customize the robot uh, to my slider and make it do a whole bunch of other things that it didn't originally do. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking them out if you're a novice at coding because they were a great help. I'm going to post the code for anyone to use as well as a diagram of my wiring because I did change things a bit. I added a diode to direct the voltage from the motor. I also added a motor dampener to quiet down the vibration. I used a broken Arduino and added a 12 volt connector as well to take a 12 volt rechargeable battery. I added additional LED lights to act as indicators for the switches and I also attempted to design the chip as compact as possible in order to fit in a tiny package. I was able to make semi-transparent case out of popsicle sticks and plexiglass. I also added a few extra wires to allow for updates and expansion in the future in case I wanted to add more switches. Okay, so here it is. This is my finished prototype. This is just the guts. This isn't the case, obviously. I broke two full prototypes and I broke about six Arduinos in the process of making it. The Arduino's built-in light gives a ready status indicator as well as a five second countdown after a function is requested. There are also four LEDs that can tell which switch is on and off. The slider features four switches that can perform up to 16 functions, including 10 seconds, up to six hours of slider motion, as well as a return function. One tip that I would recommend is that you use female pin sockets so that if you break something, you can take the Arduino out or, or the stepper driver out and put in a new one instead of starting over from the beginning because once you solder it down, it's down unless you have female pins. Once it's all crammed into the case, it looks pretty neat and it hooks onto the bottom of the slider. The battery is attached with Velcro and comes off easy when you need to recharge. Another cool thing about this slider is that it works really well with gimbals. My gimbal has a programmable AB point that allows it to go up to three hours. This is perfect for interviews or time lapses where you wanna make the shot even more dynamic. So again, I'm gonna post all of this information as well as any additional resources I use 
in the description below. But for right now, I just wanna say thanks for watching and here are some test shots using the slider at various speeds. Wasn't that dramatic? It's not even on.